Uh, bronchothermoplasty is the only uh, medical treatment for asthma that's not a medication. Uh, it's actually a procedure in which we use radio frequency energy to de decrease the muscle that lines the breathing tubes. And we know that this muscle that people have who have asthma, the muscle when, it, uh, uh, when they have an asthma attack, the muscle spasms and they wheeze and they have a difficulty breathing. Um, what bronchial thermoplasty does is actually we reduce the amount of smooth muscle and essentially make the lung so that it can't react uh, as aggressively to those asthma triggers. So bronchial thermoplasty is indicated for patients with severe asthma. So this is a minority of patients that have asthma, so it's not something that we are typically using in most patients. Uh, when we have a patient who has been on the right medications, they're using them correctly, and they're still not controlled, that's the patient we're looking at for this procedure. Um, it is an exciting procedure because it's something that is durable, meaning that once the patient's completed the procedure, it lasts for years and potentially lifelong. Um, it also significantly improves patients' control of their symptoms. So they're having less medication need, they're not having to go to the emergency department as often, they're not missing work as much. And I think it's important for patients to know that this therapy is very, very effective at reducing asthma severity, but it's not a cure for asthma. Patients still need to use their asthma medications and they still need to avoid triggers. Um, but in those patients who can't be controlled with standard therapy, it can be a significant uh, life changer for them. Well, asthma is, as we know in Hawaii, asthma is very prevalent. Something around 8% of people in Hawaii have asthma. And it's a, also a very uh, disabling diagnosis. I mean, think of all the children in the school, parents that can't go to work, and lost income from that. But also, it's a very uh, uh, expensive condition in that patients have to go to the emergency department, they're taking multiple medications to control their asthma. And with bronchial thermoplasty, we actually see that the patients don't have to go to the ER as often, they don't miss as many days of work, and, there's an, and it also appears that they can possibly be on less medication, uh, and symptomatically they feel better. Well, recently uh, here at Straub, we had a patient that was referred to us from an outer island, and that patient had a hole in their lung, in effect, and air leaking out of their lung, and that patient was in the hospital for 30 days, uh, really unable to be discharged because of this persistent leaking uh, air out of their lung. And here we at Straub have, uh, we're the first hospital in Hawaii to actually use this technology called endobronchial valves. Now, an endobronchial valve is a one-way valve that we place inside the breathing tubes and in effect block off that hole. So the patient has a hole where air is leaking out of their lung and then we're able to actually place these little valves that help um, the lung heal and reduce that, that leak. And in general, the, they're, very, they're very effective uh, and when placed, when they are effective, they can often prevent the patient from needing a surgical procedure, which is our goal. That's our goal is to try to manage them without surgery. Uh, and then once the patient's healed, as I stated earlier, we can remove those and the patient then can go on with their life. So oftentimes these are patients who have emphysema from having smoked before, or maybe, maybe they don't have, maybe they never smoked, they can still have emphysema. Sometimes they're maybe perhaps after a trauma, uh, sometimes after surgery, when they have lung surgery and they have a persistent leak and their lungs having difficulty healing. Uh, so the most common causes, however, would be patients with emphysema or, or post-surgical air leaking. So the lung cancer screening actually is a very new uh, development and uh, the reason it's new is because previously the studies looking at this, uh, it wasn't actually successful. So prior attempts at screening with chest x-rays and with other kind of tests really didn't identify lung cancer very effectively. Um, so we finally have found that a strategy of using a CAT scan, uh, a low dose, a low radiation dose CAT scan once a year in an appropriately screened population is, has been effective in identifying cancers earlier. So lung cancer, um, we get to talk about survival. One of the most frustrating aspects of lung cancer is it's actually the number one cancer killer of both men and women. Uh, many people think breast cancer would be the leading cause of, of, for women, but in fact it's lung cancer. And part of the reason is that it's a fairly common cancer, but also the, it's a difficult cancer to treat and cure. Um, by using lung cancer screening, we hopefully find cancers in an earlier stage. We, we know that with lung cancer, our best chance for cure is with surgery. And surgery is for patients with earlier stages of cancer, like stage one or two. Uh, so our intent for lung cancer screening is to identify those patients at a time when, when surgery is an option for them.
So when it comes to determining who should have lung cancer screening, it comes down to three different criteria the patient has to meet. One is they have to have a significant smoking history, if we call it a pack year history of 30 pack years. So what that means is the patient should have smoked one pack of cigarettes per day for 30 years, or some very, multiple of that that adds up to 30 or more. We also are looking for people between the ages of 55 and 80. And the third criteria is having smoked within 15 years. 